Oh, I'm going to start on something simple. This is a, a cloth that has straight lines in it, and it you should be able to see this mouse moving around, following this shadow down through here. That's part of the shading, and then it's got this little tip of highlight along the edge. That's something that you should, could notice is that that line right there. And then this is uh, like a real bright area where the light is hitting. And when it this shade comes close to this, it gets lighter and fades out because the light reflecting off of here lights this shadow up. And to help understand what this actually is, is that this right here is the edge it rises up and this is a shadow of it so the light is coming across like this and this means that it would do the same thing so the light is kind of low but it has a shadow here that means that this bright edge right here that must be sticking up uh, kind of higher a lot higher than this right here this is a shadow where it curves down in too and in order to this one not to have that shadow on it it has to be a, a roll like this edge that's up above this this is higher than this then this droops down and then there's another light spot right here so understanding what's going on here helps you draw it but how to draw it is a little bit different because these are lines that you have to select you can select them and set aside the selections and then you can select them later but uh, if you're going to start, the first thing you would want to do is what's on the bottom. Anything that's on the bottom, because you're going to cover it up with things over the top, over on the top. So you can feel free to just do whatever you want over here, because this is the lower part, and then this covers the, this half up. Half of the screen is like, covered up with this. So that's the plan. So now I just start with this line right here. And I'm going to switch back and forth. So it's not like I can, I'm going to be selecting the color straight from there. So I selected that. And let's see if that looks right. Okay, you got uh, like seven, almost 80% from this line at 80%. There's that part. And then this goes down to about 75, almost 80%. This is about that same thing, but. I select this by the percentage that I was guessing. So I got that part. Oops. So now I'm going to draw this or just fill it in with a color. And as far as the color goes, if I'm a little bit off, see, I selected a color that's a little bit off. This color right here is a bluer than this. And like if you were to select a color that cl fits it closer, it might be something like this. That color looks more like it. But I'm going to show you what happens if you select a wrong color. It's better just to keep going with it. So that way that uh, 
you can adjust it later. So I'm going to do this in a different color. So first of all, I'm going to use a, a big brush, use a soft brush. Get the area covered pretty quick. You can see that's at a hundred percent. At least I got it filled in. Now I'm going to have to do this shading. And this is actually underneath. So this corner right here, it should be able to do that. So I'm going to put a layer under this. And then unselect that. And now, where's the mouse? Now I'm going with this is about 60%, maybe 55, somewhere around there. As long as I got it in my mind exactly where it is in this position, I can start there. And then down here is definitely closer to 70%. So this, I'm just keeping it in mind when I go here. Okay, 60%. And what direction is from here? And then this is from here it's 60 percent and from here this is about 30. okay about 60 percent and about 30 which it, it could be more than that because uh this is underneath. We can go over here if we want. Well, I'm just doing this. Just make the lines. Edit. Fill. Just might as well just fill it. So right now you can't see this. You can't see the difference. And if you can. I noticed that that line might have been rotated anyway we'll get this this has a shade it's darker up here it's more colorful here so I'll just follow that and start off with putting a light line through here And the line size, that'd be too small. That's too small. That's too small. I'm using a large canvas, so my size brush might be different because it's for the actual size. Okay, that's from the corner down. From the corner down. Okay. So let's go with eight. From the corner down. And then shadows. And a wider shadow, not that wide. Okay, it's not an exact copy of it. So, this was the color I chose, so I have to stick with it. 
and then that's fading it blending it with the uh, color one by using this color here so I need to make this darker area through here that's a little bit too dark this is about less than that so, yeah, I can work with that. Go with the smaller one and go down here. This less than that. Try one. See what I see here is a darker line through here and then there's kind of a light spot here and a shadow here. And there's the light spot and use a darker color that I was using uh, well I guess that was more of a color go with this there you probably didn't see much change there so now I'm going to uh, show you what adjustment would look like image adjustment hues and saturation and adjust the hue to a more purple So that would be the color, and then it would need to be lighter. So that's sort of like what I'm going for. And I'll just cancel that. Keep working with the color I'm working with. Okay, so now this right here is not as dark as I'm creating it here so I'm going to use a bigger brush to go through here with a light color I'll just switch this to white there now it's less you can see these little dead jumps in it it's like that 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 it's because of the brushes set below two or three so it's not going to be smooth because uh, anything below three is uh, skips so I'm going to go up to three eh. it's easier just to type it in three make this lighter and then this lighter that's not it didn't have to be that light so we'll get like this and 
and this has like a, a curve in it right here. And you can see this curve through here. And this looks like it's rounded and set flat down here. And this is sort of set flat and rounded, but it's smaller. It's still a, a close look to it. Now we can do this one. And now I'm going to select the area so I don't paint outside of it. And first thing I want to do is this light area right here, this small area. So I get a small brush and just graze the tip of it. And I got 3%, so it might take more. And in order to see it, view extras, turn that off. So you can see it now. And right now it looks like a small curve. And this don't look like a small curve. But with this light area through here added, it should make it look better. So... Get a brush the right size. That looks like a little bit too big. And see how close I need to get that. Okay. Oh, I still got it on 3%, so it is going to take quite a few strokes to get it. Okay, that gets really bright. And spreads out a little bit. So I get a bigger brush. And I st still have this. And it might need this darker line drawn back in there, which wouldn't be too hard. I'll just get one the right size. That looks about right. And draw this back in here and add a little bit of black to it. There. Now this has to get lighter down here. So I use a big brush for that. Because that covers a wide area, it fades a wide area, it fades from here to there. And up in here. So it needs not that big. Bigger. About like that. So, oops, that's the wrong color need white there now I'm going to do this line right here see it comes close here and out there so it's that big and this brush is too big for that that's too small uh, it might be about like that so I get up here where it's touching this white, and then go down here where it's not touching the white. And I'm going to draw this so I can draw clear off the screen. I think I'll adjust the flow to make it go faster. And see how that works. Apparently, I'll just pick up this color and go through here because it's not that bright. Now, this area right here it gets darker, but it's faded. So I'll blend this in by picking up this color right here where it's light and add more light. Add some darkness over here. But 
blend that in. So it looks like it's blended. And this looks like it's blended. It also has like a dark line right here, so might want to add that. Down through here. Looks like this is lighter through here. So I'll pick this up and blend here. And then the brightest light is right there. So I think I'll lower my flow so I don't do too much. And the brightest light is right here. <laughs> That's the way it goes. You just try to match it. And I can see that right here, it needs something like this color here going through. And that looks all right. As you can see here, this is like this color and then it's like drops off. So I'll try to mimic that to have less fade by using a smaller brush. This makes this edge sharper, where the two colors are. Because that's the way it looks. So I'm just copying the looks. It looks like this right here is a light spot, so I'm going to add some white there. But it looks like it needs to be lighter in that area first. There. And this right here is faded, which is faded there, but it needs to have more darker patches there. So I'll just get a smaller brush and add spots. And looks like there's a wider area right here. Sort of like where it's down a little bit. So this might be a little bit higher compared to the other one, but it's also a bigger picture. So now I have this part. I can just make sure it's all looking better. And I think this area right here could be faded a little bit. I'll drop down to three and use white and see. This whole area is bright, the brightest area. This is bright, the brightest area has this ridge of darker, which has this ridge darker. So all that looks right, except this right here is a lighter area than what this is. So, 
see that brush is too small. Now I'll just wait a minute. I'm still on this and it's still selected, so I'll select this. And the wrong there. Get that. And to me, this looks like there's a darker area right here. So I'll just go around that and get this. And maybe pick this up here and spread it around a little bit like this. This has a little place in it here where it's not as dark and it still has this ridge here. So I'll try to make that just a little bit. It's not that noticeable. And pick up some white. I guess I made it more noticeable than what it needs to be. So I try to blend it in. And then this place right here is lighter. So I'll do like this. Make this place brighter. And it's not highlighted or anything, so it's still kind of dull there. So now I have that much. You can see where my selection here is selected like this. And when I turn this off, you can see it. And you can see where I came over without, uh, like made a mistake, Trim got over here too far. That's all right for the bottom, but you don't want to do that for a top layer. You don't want a faded uh, brush mark over top of one of these top ones. So now we just select the area for the top and it's going to be, let's say this area was the lower and this area over here was the higher. See, this area was the lower area this was the higher area this is up almost over this but right here it's closer this right here is up higher it's almost on top of it but right there it's almost even because you see shading a little bit along this edge it's not much but it's shading it's something that you would notice because this over here is just like a clean straight white line and then it gets starts to get a little bit more and right here you can see this shading on it so that's almost even right there for the light so this is shaded that's shaded just a little bit right on the end and fades out so I'm going to select this part. I'm just going to select this whole part and then draw this one over top. But it helps to know where I'm at. So we can work with that later. So I'm just going to select this little past here. And then now I'm going to start a new layer and fill it. And this layer is going to need this. So I'm going to select this area and cut it off. It's about this wide and comes down here. 
So I'll just be close. Then I'm going to add another layer. Edit. Fill. And then I'm going to use white to help me with it. This is the white. I'm at 3%, so I should be able to do this easy. And this is a bigger curve. Not much bigger. So we know that that's for that, and then I'm going to hold control key and click this. That way I got that selected, and then I'll work on this, then work on that. So view extras, hide that. So this is going to be a light area through here with a little bit of shading on the edge, but I need to get this curve here wide enough. And that means that I have to add the right size of the brush. Mm, that might be all right. Still with a low flow, but I think this would need to go higher. Okay. Go higher, so I need more. There, I can adjust for it. I'll pick up this color and just go along the tip, very tip. I'll try a little more and then go back. Okay. And this needs to blend through here. While well, this is sharp, showing a, a darker ridge, pick up. Uh, get back to the brush, pick up this, and I think it needs a smaller brush. Okay, and then I just go down through here, and then it's blended out. I'm going to use shift to help me. And then it blends out so I go wide or wider. Then I'll just follow this. And then make a lighter area, smaller. Through here. I think that's how it looks. Nope, not quite like that. I'll pick up this color and go through here. That blends it in. So, not quite the same. Needs more blending through here. So I'll just go from here to here. And then this might need to be a little bit darker. Through here. That might be too dark. 
I'll just pick up a color that it gave me. So then I use less flow, or at least the change would be less dramatic. And this area right through here is kind of dark. So I use the same color I picked up and go through here. Help blend it in. There. Now that I have that, and I have to do some of this, there. And let's see what it looks like now. I got this needs a roll. This rolls, this curves to a lighter area. And it's kind of dark. So now I get this dark color or see which is it the light purple yep that'll work i get this color that's mixed with color and that and i'll have to start small up here then as i go down it had to come out farther So I'll just try to come out farther. Okay. So that looks similar. Now I can use the control and click on this top layer and then hide that selection and start working on this light area through here. This is probably too big. This flow could be stronger. Oh, wait a minute. I'm on the wrong layer. This is probably too strong now. But it'll work. It's just a start. And now I'll pick up this color right here and make it a bigger brush to help blend in because this is a wide curve. It's curved like this. So the brush needs to be kind of like that. Let's get one big enough. Okay, let's do that. Now it's a blend, and we want to get that dark area show up through here. So that's just about the same curve, and I'll just go along the tip here where it start where it fades, so then I can. Add this light color back here, and that would looks like it needs a small brush, something like this. And that flow rate's a little bit high for this, so I'll go like this. And I can see that right in here it needs to be a little bit darker on this one. So I'll jump back down here to this layer. You can see where I painted on that layer because it's selected. So I'll pick up this color right here and go down.
and view extras. So let's see. This needs a shadow there. And that was like a highlight there, so we'll get the big brush done first. Because this curve is like this. So we need a brush about that size. And add this highlight there. It's not a bright highlight, so I'll just pick this color up and use it. That doesn't affect much. It must be close to the color. Oh, wait a minute. Doing it again. There. Be all right if I keep using the right layer. Good thing it's underneath. And you don't see the change. But there was a change. Okay. Now, the highlight. Let's use white. And this is definitely darker right through here, so that's what we want to get because this looks like it's too blended. And I'll just pick up this dark color here, go a little bit smaller, and draw a line through there. And it looks like I should have started up here. So, there. And this light needs to be brighter through here. So you can see I'm just copying what I see and getting into the details of it. Let's see. This ridge here along this edge is about as dark as that. So and that looks like it's faded right there. So I'll pick up a color in between and fade it. There. So now we have pretty much this same thing, but it's a different color. And this dark ridge right here is definitely noticeable, which it isn't here. So I'll just add that a little bit. Wait a minute, gotta get on that layer. And we'll just deselect everything. Select, deselect. There. Now it looks about the same. Now I'm gonna merge all these layers together. I'm going to use Control E so they merge together. Now that they're merged together, I can adjust image, adjust, use in saturation, and go with a more of a purple. Yeah, it's more of a purple. Could be a little bit lighter. Image, adjust, use in saturation, and lighten it. Okay, now let's see. Well, some of the lines might be off because of the size. And let's see how close I got. 
I'll just open this up in Photoshop. And select all, edit, copy. Edit, paste. It looks like it could be grayer, which I was thinking it might be, but color, having more color still looks better. Edit, free transform. Okay, let's see how close I am on the lines. I'm a little bit off. But basically, I have pretty much the same thing. So, I can remove that. If I want to make it look better or more closer to it, I just do. Using saturation, less saturation. There. That should look about the same. So, that's the first one. Now, I guess I'm just do some of these in sequence so that this is just a simple version of the creases and lines and folds. I'm just copying what I see, but I'm showing you how that you can select the area so then you get these lines that you want. All these lines are part of the shape. And that's the way you get them is you select it or you erase everything here but and work with different layers so that you can get what you want. So I guess this is this one for now I'll upload this video and start on a more complicated one and I'm going to show you some other materials this is called broadcloth this is called calico fabric it's a, a grainier type material this is cambrai each one of these has these waves and stuff like this. This will be more complicated stuff to do. And this one is what I decided to do next. This one's more complicated. So it's going to be like I draw this shading here and erase along here. So that I or, or else just make this on a different layer. But. This is that needs to be controlled to get this shading curve like this wide and then have this line still in it. And this is going to be like the same problem here where you're going to have a curve here. The brush needs to be wide enough to cover that curve to make it look right. Like this blends in this far. The brush needs to be wider just to make that blend in this far. And then you have to go over it like this with the brush so you can do it with the brush without doing too many layers but you'll still have these lines in there that needs to be tweaked and defined to a sharper edge and this right here will be easier because you can always do that bottom part on a different layer anyway that is chiffon this is corduroy. This is flannel, cotton flannel, with the pattern net. And this is fleece. So when you work with materials, the texture of it is what you can add to make it look better. Because you get these lines and stuff in it, this woven fabric look. This is cotton jersey. And I want to I have other ones that I'm going to show you. This is denim. And then I have denim with the stitches in it. So when you're drawing fabric, you might want to learn a little bit of this. 
double stitch fabric. It's got these little light spots in it. And you can just make that. But if you're going to do these lines, then you have to stick with the flow of the lines. Like this line, mine is just cut, cut off right here because you don't see the other side. And then it comes out up here. And then there's like fur stuff and felt like for a pool table. This is like fibers, so it's like little marks. Do little scribble marks. You can probably do this with scribbles a lot and get it to look right and just leave what you want, like I did with the grain texture. And this is like almost like a, a like an armor with this like loops in it. It's the French terry cloth. And this is one that I was wanting to point out is that see these lines here, you follow the width of this line and then it gets thinner and disappears. Because it's going in to where you can't see it. That's the way it's supposed to look. And if you just go straight across with these lines and not do that, then it won't look shaped. So for now, unless you get to where you can start drawing lines and follow these curves, it's better just to not do something like this because these lines unless you're going by the reference and follow every detail of the reference which would take a lot of work then there's this leather and then this linen and this is a silvery metallic uh, material cloth this shiny and it's got a pa fabric pattern in it but it's mostly shiny and this has a gloss gloss is re real bright like you don't see really bright stuff in here this is just where the fabric is getting more light then you have fabric that's not getting so much light but this is gloss it's reflecting light and this has got a little bit of it in there but it's mostly just the brighter light that's a neoprene and this is a, a nylon material it's coarse and heavy so it, it can't fold easy like this right here, you can see this don't fold easy. It's kind of too thick or stiff to make big creases. While well, this stuff is real flimsy. So it makes a lot of wrinkles. So it's more or less the material. It's not like you decide that it's going to be real light. Unless you make up your own material. This is cotton like a t-shirt this is Oxford they use it for shirts and it shows that it does do folds and stuff but it's resist uh, kinks and stuff like this this is easier to do with this than this material because this is stiffer material this this is a softer material so it can do this. And this is a kind of a soft material. But it's also tough. Because you can see where it kinked right here. This is a kink. Where this cloth is like heavy. And got in a bind right here. And this doesn't show any binds at all. This is soft. And then this material here is. The rayon, it's a real light, airy material. So, it's 
it has a good flow to it. It can get kinked, but it can't get folded. It's sort of like it resists a fold. You can tell right here. It won't lay flat into a fold unless you iron it into a fold. And this is like a spandex type stuff. And it's, uh, well, you know, it moves elastic like. So it's it's pretty flimsy. And this is a stuff, stiffer version of it so for diving. And this is satin. Satin has highlights in it. These are highlights from light reflection. So it's got a little bit of gloss to it. This is gloss. So it affects it because you got sharp, sharper edges where it goes from dark to light. It can go pretty quick because they got highlights. Yeah, it can go dark quick and light quick because of this. And it's a soft type, uh, not like uh, this other one with this shine, that metal look. This is semi metal type. So it has highlights and shadows and stuff. It's more dramatic. And this is Shepra, Sherpa, Sherpa. It's like a an animal fur. It's almost like a woolly sheep. And I added this one in here as uh, silk, but it's a uh, coarse silk. It's got dots in it and stuff, so you can see the pattern of the rose. So if you if you want to try to make lines through something to follow the flow, it helps to not do too much that will be clearly recognized. Let's see, and this line through here. So all these lines through here is this makes it look better, but. This is must is more like really close up look, and this is a soft weave like a almost like a sweater material, and this is spandex. It has a lot of resistance because it's elastic and it'll bend and fit and and stretch out, and the if where it's like it can stretch out but if you have less space it leaves wrinkles because it can't contract it only stretch and this is a suede is like the back side of leather and so it's tough this is a kink through here and this is a kink and it goes under where you can't see it. So these are like kinks because it's tough, stiff material. So when you learn materials, you learn what's a, a kink look like. Or what's a wave in the material look like. Like this is a wave. And this is a wave through here. And this is a kink because it's takes a hard turn and won't resist as it resist a bend so it gets in a kink and it can go to a point where it can't handle that turn it just puts a point in it where it kinks like this right here goes to a point and it gets into a kink so sort of like a fold because of the resistance has to give somewhere this has a little bit of kinking in it too but it's a softer material it's just that it's the way it's laying 
intentionally made so that you can draw wrinkles. And this is terry cloth. It's got all these little loops in it. And you can see there's a kink there. There's a kink there. Because this curve spreads out and pushed it over there. Also, it could be lighting, but it looks like a kink. Because it goes dark there. And light is close by, right through here. Like it's a ridge pushing into a, a crease. That causes a kink. And this has got a lot of waves in it. This is really close up. This is tweed. You see little tiny hairs in it. Or you can draw the pattern and then draw a little bit bits of hair in it. Actually, you don't draw if you're not going to draw the pattern. Because it's better off not to draw patterns. But just a, a cloth that's solid color like this. Or solid color like this. You can see these stitches in it. And this is t twill fabric. It looks to me like it's a, like almost like a stretchable material. And it don't have any creases in it. But it's probably just laying out. It's not thrown down to have kinks in it or twisted or anything. So this is just straight lines. And this is velvet, excuse me, <coughs> this is a velvet, and I like velvet a lot. It's soft, plushy type, a little bit, so, um, but it does get kinks in it. It's hard to bend because it don't stretch or anything, so you have to con so that's why it has kinks in it. Because if the material don't uh, just go anywhere you want it. Okay, and this is a tough material. It's wool. Sort of like a padding material. And we're back to this broadcloth. So... I guess this is it for now. I'm just explaining the different types of cloth. Of course, this is just simple because there's lines in it. And simple stuff like this is easier to do. Because you just have lines, just waves. And these are folds that waves. And stuff like this to be done later. So until next time. Well. Probably be an hour from now. A day break. Get my throat cleared up. And start on this. I'll just finish off. Thank you.